Hello. Is there anything coming up from here? Yeah. Okay, because I can't seem to hear it properly. <coughs> All right. Thank you. And uh, welcome to Geek Camp. Um, so I see a lot of people here, and I'm, I'm actually quite. Uh, I read somewhere that it's about it should be thousand three hundred thirty-seven. <laughs> Is it thousand people here? Quite a lot, yeah. So, um, what I'm going to talk about today is on Ruby and uh, music, as uh, I was... Uh, uh, I do not know your name. Sorry. Sani. Sani, actually, uh, I mentioned earlier on. So, this talk is going to be a bit boring. There's going to be a lot of uh, physics and maths, and if you like that kind of thing, please stay on. But in the end of it, I'm going to talk about music as well. So, if you like music, please stay on as well. Um, maybe a quick show of hands again, because I was busy setting up my laptop, I didn't see. Anyone here actually uses Ruby? Quite a lot. Well, actually, not quite a lot, quite a little. Yeah. But never mind, it's okay. Um, not as many as I expected. Anyone here actually does music? Plays music, learns music? Okay. Well, not that many as well. Tough audience. <laughs> okay, so my name is Sao Xiong. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about myself before we go on. So I'm a programmer by trade, right? So uh, I actually do look a little bit like this at home, but uh, you know, except for the pocket protector. So I've been doing this for a long time, um, close to 20 years, I think. Uh, so in, in America, I suppose I, I should look something like this. <laughs> but fortunately, in Singapore, I don't. Yeah. Or at least I can't keep a beard that long, or rather my wife won't let me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of Ruby. Um, I spend a lot of time doing Java for the uh, first 11 years of my career. Uh, I love Java uh, when it first started, but the interest sort of faded after a while. And then I learned Ruby. So Ruby today is my passion, uh, besides my wife and my son. Uh, Ruby is my third love. And I like it so much, I actually wrote three books on Ruby. So I wrote a book on Rails. I wrote a book on Sinatra, if anyone here does Sinatra. Anyone here does Sinatra? Great. Um, and I wrote one on R and Ruby, exploring everyday things with R and Ruby. And it was translated into Japanese and Chinese recently. So that's a bit about myself. I don't talk about work here because, you know, uh, HP Labs and everything. So today what I'm going to talk about is Muse. Muse is a um, domain-specific language for creating music that's written in Ruby. And uh, this in case you want to grab the, uh, the source code, this is where the uh, uh, GitHub repository is. Welcome, please take a seat. Okay, so what it does is, is actually a software synthesizer. Right, it didn't actually turn out that way starting when I first started with it. When I first started with it, it was just about playing around with music and uh, with Ruby. And somehow or another, when I finished with it, I said, wow, okay, I've just written a software version of a music synthesizer. Of course, it's not as good as the hardware ones, but then, hey, you know, you can get it right with it, with uh, Ruby and everything. Um, anyone here recognize this picture? Give a shout. Anyone here old enough to recognize this picture? That's Hotel California, right? And this is supposed to be Hotel California. Or at least the closest I could find in Google Images. <laughs> Stuck it up here. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the kind of music. So that piece of music you heard, heard earlier on was actually written in um, Muse. So let me quickly just show you what that looks like. So this is Hotel California. Okay. It has uh, chords. It has bars, notes, and everything. So for those of you who recognize this, great for you. Right? Uh, you probably know music then. But for those of you who don't, just accept it. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about how I created Muse, um, creating sound from sine waves, then organizing the sound into music notes, then writing the notes to file, and finally wrapping it up in a DSL. 
like DSL is a domain specific language. Okay, here comes the boring part for the maybe like five, 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about physics and maths, yeah. So try to stay awake. I know it's the earliest slot today, but uh, I promise it's gonna be good later. So sound is produced by a vibration of something and the vibration produces waves. And within these waves, you have properties like amplitude and volume, oh, amplitude and, and frequency. So this is how a wave looks like. So if you want to produce um, sound, basically you create a sine wave. And uh, if you want to create a digital sound, then you create digital sine waves and put them into sound, sound files. Okay? After you have the sound, you organize it into music. Um, and basically, music notes are nothing much more than sounds with specific pitches or frequencies and durations. Each note will correspond to a particular frequency in uh, hertz. The one that I'm going to use today is the chromatic scale. Um, the, the, the scale that I'm going to use today in producing the music is in the chromatic scale. It's, it's basically a sequence of notes and within the chromatic scale there's going to be just notes. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. Like, so if you know piano or have used a keyboard before, this should be very familiar with you, uh, to you. So within that stretch, it's from C to C, it's one octave, which is 12 semitones. Um, from one C to the other C, it's, it's one octave. It is actually the same pitch class. The notes are related to each other, right? So they are not, um, they are not random. So the, each frequency, the frequency of each note is related to each other and there's a mathematical formula to it. In fact, the uh, frequencies are defined in an ISO standard. Right? There's actually a number 16 colon 1975. Uh, there's a standard pitch, A4, which is 440 hertz. And the notes of the same pitch class are in the ratio of power of two. So say, uh, if one pitch is uh, a two, then the next one will be four, eight, and so on. Or you going down below half, quarter, and so on. And this is how it looks like in, uh, in a visual manner, right? So you have A4, which is 440 hertz. You have A5, which would be 880 hertz. A6 would be 1760, and so on and so forth. With me so far? It's okay? Yeah. The difference between two semi, um, between the uh, 12 semitones is 2F, right? So you notice 440 hertz, 880 hertz. So how about the difference between two semitones? The difference in two semitones is this formula, okay? Two to the power of one over 12 times F. F is the frequency. <coughs> so how do you get the frequency? You use A4, 440, and let's say you want to go one semitone forward, or here, uh, three semitones forward. You do two to the power of three over 12 times 440, you get 523.25 hertz. With this, you'll be able to find the frequency of every note on the chromatic scale. Okay? Now, if I want to generate a sine wave from the frequency, then I use this formula, S equals sine 2 pi F. Right? So if you learn sine in your high school or, or whatever, right? this is where it comes really useful. You multiply with 2 pi because we want to turn the frequency into radians. Okay, so now we have a sine wave. What do we do with it? What we do with it is we take samples. From the sine wave, we take samples at every single point on the sine wave. Um, for 4,100 4, samples uh, over a period of one second. Why? All right, so I'll talk a bit about it later. If you're raring to look at some code, because this is Geekcamp, well, this is, this, is this is basically in code what I just described in the past few slides. I have the frequencies, so D, V, I, S, E, uh, V, 4, D, I, S, 4, E, 4, F, 4, and so on. So D, 4, um, basically is the note D, 4. Uh, D, I, S, 4 is basically D sharp, 4. Right? So it goes all the way up. You see A, 4 is 0, A, I, S, 4 is 1, B, 4 is 2. If I want to get a frequency, it's 140. Uh, times 2 to the power of step 2f divided by 12, right? So that's the, that's the formula I, I spoke of late, uh, earlier on. If you want to get the um, sine wave, this is it. 
This is the part where you look at it, where you get a sine wave. Okay, at the end of it, you have an array which has two values, x and x, and that's entered into a variable cost stream. Any guesses why I have two axes? Stereo. Stereo. X and y axis? Yeah. Stereo. Anybody else? Uh, stereo sound, right? So that's, 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 that's right. Yep. It is it's left and right. Yeah. Um, when I store it later on, I could have left, right, center, and if I do Dolby and so on, there would be five channels. But uh, basically, I did two channels, and I didn't actually generate two different values, so I generated both similar values. So it is sort of stereo and it's not stereo at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so this is a stream. You get a whole lot of the, the numbers here. And once you get the sine wave, this is how it's going to sound like. Okay, so you have just generated a note. Basically, this is A4 from a sine wave by taking samples from that particular sine wave. No, that is a pretty boring piece of sound, right? That's a very monotonous and, uh, well, you can't do much with it. So if you want to actually create something more exciting, uh, something more musical, you want to have variations to that. And there are two ways of doing variations. The first is called harmonics. Uh, basically what harmonics does is you add up the sine waves together. A sine wave has, um, is basically the most basic waveform. And I uh, have a basic waveform with a particular pitch that's called a fundamental frequency. Adding up all the sine waves that are related to it creates something called uh, a harmonic. So for example, if I y equals sine x, and I add y equals sine 2x, which I double that, I get a wave like this, okay? So this is what you get. And uh, this is how it sounds like. Okay, so let me just go back quickly to show you the difference. <coughs> Here the difference. Okay, the other one is envelope. So basically, I need to actually put an envelope on top of the, the uh, amplitude to increase or decrease the volume of the sound. Um, I have two very basic envelopes. I have a, a sine duration and I have a cos of a duration, right? So the sine of a duration sounds like this. So soft, loud, and then soft, right? If I do a cos of a duration, you be loud, then soft, okay? Now I have sound, I have musical notes, I have different variations in terms of harmonics as well as envelopes, so what I do, now I need to stuff it into uh, the actual sound files, right? And uh, the one that I'm using is a WAV file, um, so I'm basically stuffing the data into WAV file. I shall go a little bit faster since I'm halfway done. <laughs> so I use a WAV format, which is basically a derivation of the RIV format, uh, and uh, it's basically a linear PCM encoder, two channels of 40. 4,100 samples per second, 16 bits per sample. All right, this is the reason why I use 4,100. Okay, this is the uh, format. And this is how it looks like if I actually open it up in a hex editor. So what I do with it is uh, I take the samples and I write it in binary. I could actually use it just by using uh, array pack or string unpack, but um, if I want it to look a bit nicer, I, I will use a, a library such as bin data. Okay, so I use bin data and I write the riff chunk, the format chunk, data chunk, wave format, and so on, and write it into a file. Okay, and this is the wave format. Okay. So Ruby is in the room. Recognize this, right? No problem, right? Okay, so all of that code ends up with something like this. So wave file occurs wave.new sign.wave. And you write the stream in, and then you close it, and therefore you get a, a wave file. Okay, so now I have the music notes. I have different ways of uh, va making variations of it. I am able to write it into a file. So now I need to put it all together. Okay, so this is how it looks all together. But that creates just notes. And if I have to write one note at a time like this, it's going to be quite tedious. So what I need to do is to create a domain specific language to put all these things together. What is the domain specific language? Anyone here knows? Or can give an answer? 
Description. Well, it's all here, right? Description. <laughs> okay. Descriptory language to capture important bits. Yeah, so it is actually a very domain specific um, kind of way of describing something. So let's say you have a particular domain that you are good in. Uh, you don't want you to want to write it in the programming language. You want to write it in something that's very familiar to you, right? Like say, for example, if I want to write music, then I wouldn't want to write it in a programming language. I want to write it in something more familiar to me. I want to be able to write notes. I want to go to create bars. I want to create about songs and so on. So that is syntax that's not available in the programming language, obviously. So you would actually create domain-specific language to capture this concept. Right. The good thing about writing DSL in Ruby is that it is still Ruby and it is still a, a computer program. Okay, the techniques are used in use. So this is probably only um, interesting for Ruby is in the room, right? Um, so the two methods I use, uh, sorry, the, the techniques I use, there are three techniques I use. The first is using methods. Okay, basically the DSL are methods in the two classes, song and bar. Second is I use instance well. Um, I use instance well to evaluate the, the music score and then I create a, the score. And finally, for writing notes, I use something called method missing. Basically what method missing does is that um, if you cannot find method, you will do something with it. So that, that's basically method, method missing. Right. So these are the methods I talked about earlier on. This is song. Then song.record at Hotel California. Bits per minute is 100. And then the first bar. These are the notes, D4. Has two beats, E4, then F sharp 4. Right, so this is still a Ruby program. It doesn't look like a Ruby program, but it's a domain specific language for writing music. And that's uh, instance eval. So basically whatever I pump into the notes, which is here, basically D4, B colon, E4, F, IS4, it's pumped into instance eval. Instance eval evaluates the block and then it executes it. And finally, method missing. Method missing is the, the means I use to create the notes itself. Right? So here I have a chord A3, D4, FIS4, and I want to play all three notes together. How do I depict that? How do I describe that in a DSL? So basically, I put all of them string all of them together and I put underscores in between the notes right? and that will form a that will form a chord but do I need to actually describe this as a method for all of them no I don't I just need to create something called method missing and then I will detect the uh, what it starts off is a note and then after that it will generate the music okay so far yeah okay so all together now let me show you the Turkish Marsh. So you have the song record Turkish Marsh envelope. I use the default envelope. I supposedly create a, a harmonic chord organ, and then I create the first bar, second bar, third bar, and fourth bar, and so on. So this is a direct representation in Muse of this. Uh, oops, somewhere behind. This is a. Um, direct representation of this. Okay, first nine bars of the Rondo Alla Turka by Mozart. So you have B, A, G sharp, A. Right, for those of you who can read musical notation. And um, the first bar, you have B, A, G sharp, A. Right, so this is a direct translation. And this is how it translates to, in terms of the music. There are two channels, it's both X and Y. Right, so that's news. And the good thing about this is it's all written in a file, and every time you want to generate the, the music, you just um, rerun that as an executable. Okay? Continue with this. So that's the first part, and I only have 10 more minutes, so I should go a little bit faster. So that was 
the starter. That was how I created Muse. But what I really want, why I really wanted to create Muse was actually to get to this. Um, I created something called Auto, the algorithmic composer. This is Auto. I actually have this toy at home. Yeah. Um, I didn't make up the name, okay? Algorithmic composition is a technique of using algorithms to create music, and this is directly from Wikipedia, okay? So you can quote that. What does it do? Basically, you're using a, an algorithm to create music, so there is actually no human intervention, right? You could actually write an algorithm that would do all kinds of things, and from that, you can generate music. How does it generate music? It uses music to generate music, right? So you can understand my sort of engineering thought process. I need to randomly generate music. How do I do that? I need to build the tools to build it, so step by step, okay? So what I'm going to show to you today is to grab a tweet from Twitter and then I create music from it, right? But you could jolly well do this. You could scan a picture, get a pixels, uh, look at a color and then generate music from it. Get today's weather report, say maybe raining, right? And then uh, generate rainy music, right? But, uh, so, this is the algorithm. Now, Otto is a very simple robot. It's no, okay, it's no transformer. Um, so the music that's been generated, it's um, kind of wonky, but that's really got to do with my algorithm rather than uh, what are the possibilities. And what I'm trying to show here today is the possibilities. What is music here? From a very basic understanding is melody, bass, chord. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to first create the the uh, melody, uh, the chords, and after that, I'm going to add on melody to it to create music. First, grab a tweet from Twitter, okay? Single line, twitter.search, bcam, they get the statuses, I get the last status. From the text, I split the words into, I mean, I split the whole tweet into different words, and then I convert each word into a number using the touch tone keypad algorithm. Anyone here know what's the touch tone keypad algorithm? That's, that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a fancy word for just this, right? Um, so, A is 2, B is 2, C is 2, da-da-da. And basically what I do is I create a word. I create a, a number out of a word. Yeah? From then on, I find the seven most frequently found notes. Why seven? Yeah, so it's the scale, right? And then I determine the musical scale from the seven notes. Right, that's where the little training I get from uh, sitting in with my son's piano lessons come useful. Right, uh, um, musical scale from seven notes. So the seven major scales, and this is the seven major scales, and I try to find the, uh, the correct scale from that. Seven notes that I, I, I found. And then from, the, um, from that scale, I generate or I try to find the uh, chord progression. Anyone here plays music here? So this is probably a bit familiar to you. So I use a very simple um, chord progression, is the one, four, and five, okay? And then I generate the chords. And from there, I have all the chords, right? It's basically one, four, five, based on the scale that I, I uh, deduce from the, the words themselves. Okay, now for the melody. So I start with the first note of the scale. Right? So if I determine it's a C major, I start from C. Then I calculate the distance from C to the next note um, as the distance between the, the words. Right? It's a mod five. From that, I determine whether I should go up. Like, should it be C go to D or C go to, down to B? And from each syllable of the word, I generate it to be one beat, right? Just to keep things simple. And then I move from the current note to the next note. And the next note, and the next note, and the next note, until I get all the notes done from the tweet. Okay, so now I have a list of all the notes and all the chords. What I do is I break down the, the uh, words into four words per bar, and then I use the muse to write it into a wave file. And this is what it is. I'll show you the, the actual code itself in a while. As I'll show you a live demo. Okay. Well prepared here. I hope I'm online. Am I? I think I am.
unable to connect to internet. Okay, anyone? I should have done this earlier, actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is there a net? Is there Wi-Fi here? I still have four minutes, 38, 37 seconds, so. <laughs> which is, uh, which one is it? It, you, should, it? you shouldn't appear yet. Uh, Daniel, Daniel's iPhone. Is it appearing? There it is. Okay. Okay. So, I have the uh, auto here, and I'll show you auto. Basically, this auto. Okay, this auto, I configure Twitter first. And then I do a search on that, I define the syllables, da 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 da, and I generate the music. To make it fast, basically, I break it up into four parallel tracks. Okay, and this, I'm gonna run it now. You can see it running live. Uh, you can see the tweet I'm using. On my way to Geek Camp, yikes, I'm going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> so, whose tweet is this? <laughs> is he even here yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, he has generated the music, and right now, it's writing the temporary file. So, um, to make it fast, because the original version of Auto takes a long time. It's, uh, it's not very performant kind of uh, software. Uh, basically, I broke it down into uh, parallel threads and then I combine all of them together. So it's done. I've created music from the tweet. And uh, this is it. I'm actually done. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, uh, thanks, Stefan. It's uh, really quite amazing to connect music, coding, maths, and physics all together. Any questions from the audience? Marcus? Uh, how would you add an instrument? Like, if you're speaking, like, different, like, what's the representation of the instrument? Okay, so you can actually generate different kinds of sound um, by combining different variations of the harmonics, different waves, and then uh, creating different sounds mm -hmm. of different instruments. That, in theory, in reality, it's actually very, very hard to do that. So I could create different kinds of waveforms and combine them together. And I say, I want to make, make it sound like piano, or to make it sound like guitar. Uh, but in reality, it's very, very difficult because the uh, the real sound is actually very, very complex, and the, the waves that are being generated are, are very, very complex as well. Um, at one point in time, I actually wanted to, to make um, voice as well, right, to be able to generate speech from it, and uh, that's even a much tougher thing to do. I think the, the hardware guys have actually cracked it using a very simple chip, so that's full admiration. If you were to do it in software, it can be really hairy to get a capture card, which is weird. Um, have you thought about how you are going to optimize the whole process of research like this? Optimize? Um, not really. I have not really thought about it. The only thing that I could think about is, uh, at this point in time, is writing a separate language. Because Ruby is not actually the fastest language in the world. Is it possible to convert that music back to the tweet? Oh, okay, so uh, another, another, another very frequently asked question. So, um, I suppose so. 
but um, it will be a lot harder. Right? It's like a one way hat. Yes. Um, so it's nice to know that somebody here is bringing music. Um, I have a few questions. So, um, are you using any synthesizing models? Are you using additive, subjective, or do you plan to like, you know, like, uh, support the frequency modulation synthesis? Um, so when I started off with it, I, I actually wanted to do auto, right? And then I worked backwards. So how do I actually generate music? And then I ended up with sine waves. And then I, I moved onwards from there. I wasn't intending to create a music synthesizer originally. So a lot of these things are actually um, the shortest way possible to getting to my goal, uh, which was doing auto. So all the things you mentioned, I read about it along the way, but I'm actually no music person, right? I'm not a sound engineer or anything. So I mean, I read about it, but I'm not actually familiar with it. Yeah, so, um, so do you plan to move, ever start up uh, putting it to the web audio API so that it's a more real time instead of generating a wave file that can be Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the um, web audio APIs and a number of other things could do uh, a lot more wonderful things. This is actually a very primitive software synthesizer. Um, but uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I should have did this in, in this way is I also want to show how music or how sound can be generated from sound, the uh, sound waves, right, from first principles. So it's not really like um, a professional library, it's more like an uh, educational library. Yes, the lady at the back. Yeah. Hi, um, what are the benefits, like, in the different modes of music that you can use to support them, you know, all the rest of the stuff? Yep. So um, I think for the first question, it's, the answer is no, because it's a simple library. Um, it actually does not cater for, or rather it can cater, potentially cater for it, but you need to put in a lot more logic to it. Because you need to actually control the uh, amplitude, you need to control the harmonics. And I only have very simple controls to it. So um, that's the first question. The second question, yes, you can do left hand and right hand. So if you look at the, the code here, you can actually do more than left hand, right hand, right? You can actually do like 10 at the same time, uh, 20 or whatever. It's just going to be very, very slow, right? You look here, Turkish March. Um, you will look at the, the, the score again. Here is only the right hand. So here is the right hand and the left hand. So you see bar one, this is the right hand and this is the left hand. Right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. So potentially I could have like right hand, left hand, then another instrument, and a third, third instrument, fourth instrument, fifth instrument. So theoretically, I can do that. And I can actually specify different harmonics and different envelopes for each of the instrument. So you can potentially create it, but um, this is a, a very simplistic um, a library. So right now, there's no easy way of doing it. And uh, you actually need to do translation manually. Like, I actually even tried something like there was um, I can't remember now. But anyway, there was this um, other uh, pseudo language that allows you to translate music to music scores. Right? I tried to pass that, but uh, it was actually a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. So I did. This is what I ended up with. Uh, I noticed that mouse A4 is defined as 440 hertz by yes. ISO standard. Yes. Uh, if you use like uh, 430 hertz, for yeah. example, yeah. do you think the music will be less beautiful? I mean, why is what 440? Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you try by other number, and maybe the music will be less beautiful than. Uh, right that's a good question, actually. I do not know the answer to that uh, because. I still say it's 440, I say it's 440. <laughs> okay. 440 was actually a Nazi propaganda which came the international standard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you have it. It should sound, it should sound, it should sound just as nice with any other. Yeah. It would just sound unusual. Unusual. Yeah. But nice. Question. Oh, question. 
key, but I also have a reply. But actually, if you use a different hertz, then it'll just be off key because it, it would be a different note yeah. if you use the correct hertz. Yeah. Uh, but actually, my question would be that could you actually take a sound sample from an instrument and then uh, do a Fourier transformation of the sound sample to discover what is the harmonic that you require? Yeah. yeah. So actually, I, I was trying that. Uh, uh, it's a lot harder than uh, what it sounds like. <laughs> so it's a bit like, you know, the cryptology uh, is like one way hand, you won't do it, but you can do it, but it's a lot harder. Than, I was trying to make it halfway and I didn't want to make it too much. Any other questions? Um, why did you invent your own DSL instead of using something like MIDI or something that's already sort of that something that describes music and is already sort of standardized? Yeah, so um, so it's sort of a history to that. Um, two things. The first thing is that I was doing it halfway, and then I realized that yeah, I could actually done it in MIDI, yeah. right? So that that was that. I was it done halfway before. Yeah, yeah. The second thing is I I really wanted to. Um, I really wanted to show how this could be done from the first principles, right? So, um, if you generate in MIDI, it will still be magical because it's MIDI file, right? But how does MIDI get translated into actual sound files? You still don't know. But here, you are translating directly from bits and bytes into music by saying that this is how you do it, right? You create a sine wave, you combine the sine waves, and you generate the sound. So those are the two reasons. Uh, maybe a last question for Sasha. Yes, Sorry. Is it and Yep. I didn't plant you there, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Muse. You feel free to just take it and uh, do whatever you want with it. Is Otto in the repository as well? It's in the repository. Uh, it wasn't originally, but I just somebody mentioned to me recently and then I push, push it up as well. Okay, if not, right. uh, yeah. thank you. Thanks a lot.